Namaste. Welcome. Welcome to our Sunday gathering, our Sunday Sangha, our meditation, our time together. If you will begin with me today with a short meditation, focusing your attention at the sun center, the point between the eyes. Turn your head to the left with a double exhalation. And bring the head back to the center, beginning to watch your breath. Oh, great spirit, divine and precious Lord of life. Om Shri Surya Vanamaha. Om Shri Ravi Vanamaha. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. O ye powers that be, O ye beloved ancestors, saints and sages of all times, of all places, we call upon thee to sweep clear our paths, to lift us, to vivify us, to strengthen us as we share this meditative time together. Om Namo Saha Navavatu, Sahana Bunaktu, Sahaviriam Karavavahai, Tejas V Navadi Damastu, Ma Vivishavahai. Om. May there be peace and harmony amongst us. May there be ease of communication amongst us. May there be joy shared between us. Namaskar. In the ever-present now of this moment, and once upon a time in the ever-present now, there lives a great celestial being whose name is called by some Narayana. Narayana, Om Namo Naraya Naya. Now this being is the being that set the order of the universe in which you are living. This being is the being that set the rules for the universe in which you are living. This being is the being who is a form of Lord Vishnu, the sustainer of life. You know, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the sustainer, Shiva, the dissolver. Sometimes it's easier for the mind to think of them as brothers, equal, equal brothers. For without Brahma, nothing new would come into the world. Without Vishnu, everything that was created would dissolve away. You know, we like to sustain things. Easy to create, hard to sustain. And without Shiva, we would not have the dissolution at the time that we need it at the time and the way that we need it. That being said, Narayana looked down upon the earth and decided, no, I'm not so sure. These humans that are down there, these souls that I live within, they're not doing such a good job. They're not developing the way that they should, spiritually, spiritually. You see, every soul that goes down upon that earth, according to the rules that Narayana set up, had a choice. They could devote their lives to attuning to the Narayana, the divine spark within, 
to tune in and ascend upward, or they could devote their lives to the earth, to matters of the earth. And most chose to ignore again and again and again and again the subtle awarenesses. They chose to ignore the messages that they received in their dreams. They chose to ignore the signs that they received, that they received throughout the day, the symbols. So he wanted to improve upon things. I do. Can I do? Ah. Now, Narayana had two attendants, two disciples, if you will, Jaya and Vijaya. And they were so devoted to him. They were so close to him. They were so intimate with him. They shared every waking hour, every waking minute with Narayana. He decides. He's going to take a nap. Time to take a nap. Now, he knows that every time he tries to take a nap, somebody comes to bother him because Narayana is the great solver of problems. And so if a problem happens upon the earth and a soul is spiritually advanced, the saints, the sages, they all come to Narayana. Narayana, Narayana, Narayana. Oh, you've got to hear what's happening. You've got to hear what's happening. Always one crisis after another. He wants to take a nap. So he says to Jaya and Vijaya, I'm going to go take a short nap. Now, anybody comes, you tell them, Neti, 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 I'm not here. I'm taking a nap. Anybody comes, Nitty, nitty, nitty. I'm not here. I'm taking a nap. Yes, my Lord. Yes, of course. Namaskar. Of course, we will do what you say. So Narayana goes to lay upon his serpent. This is his bed. His serpent. His serpent the symbol of the kundalini power within him, the kriya power that resides within Narayana. And he goes to lay down. Not even has his head hit his hand. He's just off to dreamland. Jaya goes to the door, opens the door, and he sees a group of sages in front of him. Very adept sages. And I think, oh boy, here we come. They said, we're here to see Narayana. We're here to see Narayana. I'm sorry, but Narayana is taking a nap right now. And he asked that we not disturb him. Well, obviously, young man. You do not understand. You do not understand how important we are. You do not understand who we are. Do you see? Look at us. We are here as sages from the earth. Narayana would want to be wakened up if he knew we were here. And besides, how rude is it of you to keep us waiting on the doorstep? Oh, Jaya and Vijaya both stand together. Each raising a hand up. I'm sorry. Narayana has told us that he does not wish to be wakened. He told us no matter who came, no matter what they asked, no matter the problem, he did not wish to be wakened. He wants to take a nap. Well, you know, I'm sure that if Narayana knew what the problem was, 
he would want to be wakened and he would want you to be intelligent enough to wake him. Now go and wake him. I'm sorry, both said with stern, clear gentleness, I'm sorry. Our Lord has asked us to guard him, to keep him and protect him and to let him take his nap. They were so focused in their devotion, so single-minded, so clear. There was no wavering. There was no, oh, come in. Oh, of course. Oh, you can wait till he wakes up. No. You have to come back. Our Lord has asked to not be disturbed. So devoted in what they thought was the right thing to do. Acting like the tides upon the earth. The moon becomes full and the tides come. They don't say, oh, well, you know, maybe not today. I know you're full, but I'll come back tomorrow. No, the moon becomes full, the tides come in. They move to the waxing and waning. So the sages are getting ready to leave. And one of them turns and says, you'll be sorry, you'll be sorry. And he mutters and places a curse upon them both. Oh, I don't like that. So a few minutes after they leave, of course, a few minutes after they leave, Narayana wakes up. Jaya and Vijaya go and they're, you know, oh, Narayana, gee, oh, my beloved Lord, it is so wonderful to be in your awakened presence again. We had a little action here while you were gone, little activity. And so they proceed to tell him, you know, these sages came from the earth and they wanted us to wake you up. But we told them no, because you said you didn't want to be woken up and we did the best we could. And, and Ryan says, it's, it's, it's okay, it's okay. You did well, you did well. You did well, my beloved. Jaya, who is a little bit older than Vijaya, just by a few minutes, says, well, I'm not so sure how well we did. You know, the eldest always gets to tell the difficult things. When they left, one of the sages turned around and went, ah, ah, and cursed us, my Lord. Hmm. Now, Narayana knew that this was going to happen. He set the whole thing up. What's he going to do? Well, no, let me see. He cannot violate the laws of the world he set up. All right. He created this universe and he cannot violate the laws of that universe. Everything would fall apart if he went against that which he had created. But he's got some wiggle room. So he says to them, well, I'll tell you what, you have a choice. They cursed you because you have been so close to me all this time. So here's your choice. You can go down to the earth. The curse was they had to go down and live among the humans. That was the curse. They were so close to the God, they had to go down and live among the humans. Interesting that that's a curse. But a blessing. So Narayana says to them, well, here's your choice. 
You can be born a thousand lifetimes into a virtuous family and incarnate a thousand lifetimes upon the earth being born into a virtuous family. And then come back to me. Or you can be born three lifetimes into a non-virtuous family. Three lifetimes into a family that has forgotten me. And then you can return back here. Without a question, they both said together, three lifetimes, my Lord, three lifetimes, and then we will be back to you. So, Narayana being a solar symbol, being a symbol of balance, being a symbol of the balance of life in the universe, bows to them, says, okay, your wish shall be granted. But see, all along, Narayana knew. He knew what was going to happen. He knew the choice that they were going to make, and he knew what they would do. So they go to earth, incarnated into the earth, and incarnated into a demonic family, a family that was absolutely obsessed with money, very greedy, very cruel, mean, not kind at all. Very ambitious. Overly ambitious. And they had forgotten. Jaya and Vijaya had forgotten. They were born and they forgot Narayana. How is that possible? They were so close to Narayana. They had forgotten. Time went on. They grew. They grew up. Jaya got married. Had a uh, his wife was pregnant. And she became pregnant with a soul who was a celestial being, a soul who was kind and loving as they had been when they were next to Narayana. Not so easy, not so good a thing, not so good a thing. Why? Because he was being born into this demonic family. Very hard, very hard. But a little yogi walks by one day, walking by the house. Hmm. What is that soul doing in this house? He says, what is that soul doing? in this house. Comes around at night using his yoga city. He teaches that baby, that soul, the fetus, the soul who was incarnating in the deep in mother. Om Namo Narayanaya, Om Namo Narayanaya. Om Namo Narayanaya, Om Namo Narayanaya. And the child is born remembering. The child is born remembering. And everything that happens in the course of his life, he is born remembering. Not so easy upon the earth. Living in a family that he is not aligned with the Narayana. His father tries to teach him the ways of the world. His mother tries to teach him the ways of the world. And he keeps chanting, Om Namo Narayanaya, Om Namo Narayanaya. In time, he grows. In time, He gets married. It 
and he has a son. He continues to chant Om Naro, Om Namo Narayanaya, Om Namo Narayanaya. But unbeknownst to him, the son is Vijaya, who has been forced to come and live a demonic lifestyle. But somehow, through the blessings of the sages, he was born to this soul who had learned Om Namo Narayanaya, Om Namo Narayanaya. So here's a family that have forgotten Narayana, a family that does not know Narayanaya. The son is born the night of the summer solstice. Ah, high noon, excuse me, I forgot. High noon of the summer solstice. And so he is filled with the solar power of the sun. All of the energy of the sun fills this being. But remember, he has forgotten Narayana. And he grows and off he goes goes off and gambles and he goes off and drinks and he goes off and eats too much and he goes off and becomes a wastrel, I guess one would say, someone who did nothing but waste his time. And his father said, my son, I'm sorry. I see your power. I see your strength. You were born on the longest day of the year. You were born on the day in which the power of the sun is celebrated and honored by all the peoples upon the earth who remember. What a great blessing you could be to this earth. But you, my son, have forgotten. You have forgotten. You need to leave the house. You need to leave the home. I'm sorry. You need to leave this kingdom that I have created here. You need to go. And when you have learned and balanced your life, you may return. Well, if that's how you feel about it, fine. I will go and I will never see you again. You know how it is. The young man goes off and he's gone for a year, two years, three years. In his father and mother, Every solstice that comes around, every summer solstice, they remember him. Every summer solstice, they chant Om Namo Naraya Naya. Om Namo Naraya Naya. Om Namo Namo Naraya. where the father had taught the mother the beautiful mantra to Narayana. They chant it at the solstice from sunrise to sunset. They chant it at the solstice from sunrise to sunset, from sunset to sunrise, in the hopes that their son their beloved son would hear, would know, would return.
after a very, 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 very long time, as they were growing old of being on the earth, the summer solstice comes again. The father goes and opens the front door. And standing in front of him it's a man very dirty long scraggly hair very wrinkled smelling quite odoriferous not pleasant at all wearing raggy clothes. And the man says to him, Papa, it's my birthday today. It's a solstice. Could I come home? Please. I'm so tired. I've done everything that I thought I should do. I've traveled around the world. I've partied. I've spent all the money you gave me. Now I've lived on the streets all this time. Could I come home? And Papa calls his wife over. Today, on the longest day of the year, our son wishes to return. This man, he says, is he says he is our son. She takes a hold of his hand, her husband's hand. Together they stand. She looks at her husband and gives him the eye, you know, the wife eye, and says, Oh, 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 And they see in this being in front of them, this man who is their son, who they could not recognize because all of the chi, all the prana was all cattywampus, <laughs> was all drained, was gone but they see a tiny bindu of light shining from his chest. And they continue. Om Namo Naraya Naya. Om Namo Naraya Naya. Om Namo Naraya Naya. And the light grows. And they recognize him. And as the light of Narayana grows, the light of the sun at his sun center begins to glow. They open their arms. They welcome him back. They welcome him in. Offer him a bath, clean clothes, food, and a place to sit and tell his story. 
And so he does. And they listen. The sun and the moon listen. The mother and the father listen. They witness. They hear. They hear the story of all the times he stumbled and fell. Of all the friends who betrayed him. Of all of the lies he told, of all of the people he swindled, of all of the hurt that he left behind him in his wake, of all of the cruel and evil things he had done, they heard. Because of their yoga city, he could share with them all of the cruel thoughts he had thought about all of the beings on the earth, all of the many times he was critical of others, all of the many times that he walked down the street and said, ah, oh, this person, ah, oh, I don't like this about them, ah, oh, I don't like that. All the little darts that he sent out during the time that he was gone. Now I know you're not like him. But they listened silently, chanting Om Namo Naraya Naya. And the son of the father, the solar symbol, the father, it was the solstice. He began to glow and to grow and to glow and to grow and to grow and to grow. until his light filled the room. And the moon, the mother, turns to her beloved son who has come back and embraces him in her arms and says, come, come. She is the one who moves and says, come, come be with us. You are welcome. You are welcome. Come rest with us. Come rest in the light divine of your father. Come rest in the warm nurturing of your mother. Come rest in the love that we both share with you on this day. And they continue to chant. And Narayana looked down and saw and knew. And he saw Jaya and Vijaya. He saw what had happened. He knew that they were going to be able to shortcut their number of incarnations. He knew that sage was going to chant the mantra. And that in spite of the family he was born into, Vijaya would find his way back to Narayana. He knew that Jaya, in spite of his tendencies, towards cruelty or worldliness or forgetfulness, if you will, that he too would find his way back to Narayana. And thus they did. As the family was sitting there on the solstice chanting, the Jaya began first, Jaya chanted, Chandra Ji chanted, the mother. And before them, Narayana appeared in his golden 
light-filled splendor in his form of the sun. In his form of sustainer of the universe, he appeared to them. and filled their home with his presence and gave them a blessing. I shall live within the heart of every human, right below the heart of every human. Because of you, a small part of me will come that spark of divinity will be within each soul who incarnates. Now come, let us go and celebrate. Let us go and enjoy closeness and intimacy and warmth and love together as a family, together as loved ones. And off they went. Yeah, what is the story? Oh, it's the story of you and me. It's the story of all of us coming down onto the earth. It's the story of how we need to choose, how we can choose, what we have to do. Do we choose to remember the divine that we are? Do we choose to turn inward? Or do we choose to forget? It's a story of freedom. It's a story that says, ah, I may be born with these tendencies, but I can free myself. I have the choice. I have free will to free myself. It is a story that says, if the time is right, as it is today on this beautiful, overcast day of the solstice here in Chicago, the sun externally it's not shining, but the sun internally is here. It is here, my beloved. It is here within you. Joy, 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 joy. Take a minute now. Take your hands like this. Turn them together. Inner joy. Tapping your chest gently. Closing your eyes. Inner joy. Inner joy. Inner joy, inner joy, inner joy, 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 joy. And again, this time, Ananda, 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 da, da. Know that no matter what you have done in your life, no matter what thoughts you have thought, what actions you have done, what kindness you have given, what cruelty you have shared, you can improve your life. You have the capacity to improve your life. You can improve your life. You. You can choose to make your life better to make every moment better, to make every moment more joy-filled. You choose, you can make a choice. Today, when the sun, the day is longer, the longest day of the year here today upon the earth, the sun shines brightly. The sun externally, is the symbol of the sun, the solar power that lives within you at your Ajna Chakra. It is the symbol of the power, the power.
power that lives within you. It is the symbol of the yoga city that lives within your being. It's not external to you. The sun external is a symbol. The sun internal lives within you. The power resides within you. And that power is moved by the moon, by your movement, by your intent, by your choice, which is lunar. Like the young man who left and went and did everything that his desires, all the desires that arose, he fulfilled. All of the selfish desires that arose, he fulfilled. All of the things that he thought were going to make him happy, he fulfilled. And then there was emptiness. And he went back to the sun and the moon and meditated and called them, please, please welcome me. Let me come back. And what they did is they listened. They were quiet. They were still. They listened. You know, Father's Day is celebrated here in America today and elsewhere around the world as a day to honor our fathers. But mystically, you may remember that when you incarnate, when we incarnate into the earth, we go around the spine, we circle around the spine of the soul that we choose as the mother. Two and a half months. And during that time, we're trying to make a decision. Is my karma, does my karma match this soul's karma? Is this where I wish to incarnate in this life? At the two and a half month mark, we have to make a decision. And when you decide to lock into the spinal column of the mother, by the end of the three months, you're locked in. Then you call forth the father. You call forth the father, not the woman whose spine you are locked into, but you choose who the father is going to be. That's a hard concept for some because you say, well, how did I choose this being that was not kind to me? How was I so fortunate as to choose someone who was so kind to me? It was your choice. But see, that's the movement. The feminine moves to the masculine and the masculine is where the power resides. Now I'm not talking about men and women. I know I'm talking about feminine and masculine in this, the mystical sense. The feminine is the movement, the masculine is the power, but the power has no ability to move by itself. It's like having a reservoir of electricity. So what? You get electricity. If you don't put a plug in it, nothing happens. You know, I've got outlets here in the wall and there's the capacity to get electricity. But if I just look at that outlet and expect something to happen, well, I'm in trouble. Nothing's going to happen. So, You have made the choices. Now, really what you are here doing, what you are here for, the whole story, is you're here to learn, to learn what is the most important thing for you to take from this incarnation. You know, in, in meditating and reflecting today about fathers and in meditating and reflecting over these last days to what could I say to you today? 
reflected and remembered several people who were very close in my life and realize we all choose differently. Some people are here and they're devoted to their family. That's their focus is their immediate family because that's where they feel the greatest potential for their evolution is. Some people are devoted service to country, to community, and then to family last. That's where they feel their greatest source of evolution is. Some people are devoted to teaching, to helping others for their enlightenment. And they exhaust themselves as a result because that's where they think their greatest source of enlightenment is. What is yours? Doesn't matter if you're here in a male body or a female body. What are you? What's the theme? What are you doing over and over and over again? What are you doing over and over again? That for you is the reason, the consciousness, the ideal that you are holding that you think is going to bring you to enlightenment. And you may not think it consciously, but look at your life. What are you doing and how have you been spending your time? And once you know that, once you see that, you can sit back and say, well, now, where has it gotten me? What do I need to do differently? Where has it gotten me? I hope on this beautiful day of the solstice that wherever you are physically present, that you will find the sun shining beautifully, that the day that is so long you will enjoy, that you will enjoy the beautiful, radiant power of the sun shining upon you, that you will turn your face to the sun, that you return your consciousness to the sun, that you will return your consciousness to the sun, to the sun, to the Ajna Chakra. And you will feel the blessings of the warmth, the blessings of the, the radiant heat that we need to grow, the energy that we need to grow. And so let us now turn our time to some short meditation. If you will focus your attention here at the Sun Center. Turn your head to the left with a double exhalation. Bring your head back to the center. Begin to watch the breath. Turn your eyes to the sun center, closing them, focusing them upward at the sun center. See the golden bindu of light coming towards you. Now chanting either silently or softly. Chant with me, Om Namo Naraya Naya. We will chant this seven times, keeping the attention focused at the sun center. Om Namo Naraya Naya. Om Namo Naraya Naya. Om Namo Narayana 
Narayana. Om Namo Narayana. Om Namo Narayana. Om Namo Narayana. Om Namo Narayana. Continue to focus the eyes at the sun center. And again, seven times. Om Namo Naraya. Om Namo Naraya. Naya Om Namo Naraya 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 Naya There is an order to the universe. Learn the order of the universe in which you live. Attune yourself to the laws of life. Attune yourself to the laws of the universe. Know that it is very orderly, this world in which we live. Turn inward, ascend upward. Do not stay at the same place. Turn in and ascend up so that you can more clearly see the laws of life. Oh. 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 May the infinite Lord of life bless you. May the infinite Lord of life make its face shine upon you. May the infinite Lord of life become an ever-present awareness in your life. May you become aware, continually aware, 
of the presence of the divine within you. Find joy today. Find Ananda, 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 Ananda. Be thou blessed, be thou blessed, be thou filled with the blessings of life. May you see your own goodness. May you become an ever greater blessing unto all of those who enter your aura. It is your choice. It is your choice to become an ever greater blessing. It is your choice to attune to the joy that is here and available to you. It is your choice to draw the Ananda into your life. And I tell you, my beloved, no matter the circumstances, you can choose for just a nanosecond to make it better, for just a nanosecond to lift, to remember the goodness that thou art. I am very grateful to you for having shared this time with me. I am very grateful to those of you that have spent your energy, your day, your time. It is truly a blessing to share these meditations with you, to share in the happiness with you. And so have a wonderful rest of your day. Find joy, find happiness. Shanti. Namaste. Namaste.